What's happening, everyone? It's Abdali here, bringing you guys another awesome Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go EV Tips and Tricks tutorial video. It's finally time that we take our Mew out of our Pokeball Plus. I know, I know. A lot of you guys have gotten the Pokeball Plus, either buying it separately or getting it part of the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Pokemon Let's Go EV bundles. And you guys have popped open that Mew very quickly, enjoyed the entire game, and uh, use your Mew throughout the entire story mode. I know a lot of you guys have done it, and that's very cool. I personally have not, but now it is time. I'm looking at this Pokedex of mine, and I'm like, come on, Pokedex. Like, look at it. We've got 152 Pokemon out of 153. I need to just crack this thing open and actually finish it off. So... I mean, we're here. We gotta do it. And then, like, look, right over here, at the same time, like, my bag, I've been working on, like, a living dex, right? Those of you guys who don't know what a living dex is, it's catching a Pokemon of every single, um, I guess every single Pokemon. Yeah. So getting a Squirtle, Wartortle, Blastoise, Caterpie, Metapod, Butterfree, etc., etc. So I've been going through and making a living Pokedex so that when Generation 8 comes out, I can easily transfer all these guys over and I'll have 153 Pokemon that I don't necessarily have to catch in the newer generations. So, yeah, I've been working on this with all the different Alola forms and whatnot, but it's just, it doesn't feel complete. So, what we're going to do on today's episode is we're going to do two different things. I'm going to crack open this thing, not literally, no, no, we're not going to pry this thing open and get Mew out. No, we're going to do it digitally, we're going to claim our Mew, and at the same time, we are going to test out if Madame... Uh, Madame Celadon can actually influence the nature of our Mew. I would love to have a timid uh, Mew. That would be great. I mean, I'll even settle for a jolly Mew. That's that's awesome. Anything that ups up the speed. Uh, so that would be really great for me. If I don't get that, then we're going to have to figure out what we're going to be doing. So our second thing that we're going to do in this video is give you guys five different competitive movesets for your Mew. So if you guys already have your Mew that you claimed from your Pokeball Plus, Consider a couple of these movesets that I kind of did some research on and feel that they'd be pretty good. So, let's jump on in. Let's do it. It's Mew, though. It's Mew. Alright, here we go. So, here's Madame Celadon. In case you guys don't know who she is, she is the uh, in-game NPC who allows you to manipulate natures of certain Pokémon. So, it's a little bit easier to get the nature that you wanted on a wild Pokémon. It also works on gifted Pokemon, like you have an old Amber, you go to Aerodactyl, wherever the place, uh, over on Cinnabar Island, you, you get an Aerodactyl out of it. If you have Madame Celadon going with whatever nature you have for the day, then those gift Pokemon will absolutely be of that nature. So, I don't know if that's going, if this is considered a gift Pokemon, but we're going to figure it out on today's episode. So, here we go. Now, this is a little convoluted. It's a little convoluted when you think of what she's asking for over here. She does it... Uh, she asks you a couple questions. She never blinks. She looks straight into your soul with her yellow eyes. And then uh, she asks you which five colors... Um, there are five different colors in front of you. Which one do you water? So, uh, this one is like, alright, so which nature or sorry, which stat do you want to be the positive stat nature? So in my case, I'm looking for a timid. That means that I'm looking for a special attack. So uh, the way that it goes is exactly from that. Red is going to be attack. Next one is going to be defense. Next one is going to be uh, special attack. Green is going to be special defense. And then pink is going to be speed. So that's exactly how that kind of lines up. It lines up with the stats anyway. So attack, defense. Uh, special attack is blue, special defense is green, and then pink is there. I just wrote some notes off screen just in case. But yeah, that's exactly it. So what we want is special attack is blue. So I'm going to go with blue, and then... Oh no, I'm sorry, I don't want blue. I want speed. Yeah, I want speed over special attack, because with Mew, Mew's base powers... Or sorry, Mew's base stat for speed is at an even 100. So anyone else in that 100 speed tier, I want to be able to outspeed them. So I'm definitely going to go with pink. So yeah, that's that. And then, uh, which ones will you thin out if you have to? I'm going to go for attack, because I want to have a set that's just going to be special attacking, which is going to be really fun, so I'm going to do that. So now we'll look in your future. Uh, she does her thing. Uh, hello, goodbye, every day beneath the sky. Okay, okay, abracadabra. Nature is so fab wow. So, Synchro. So that's kind of a little Easter egg there. You know, Synchronize is uh, the ability that those Pokemon have. 
So all the day is going to be a timid nature. You guys can see that there. So that's what I wanted. You don't necessarily need to know the names, bashful, naive, impis. You don't need to know all that stuff. Just know what stat you want added and then which one you want decreased. Uh, because that's exactly how that works out. So now that we've got this timid nature, we're going to test this out. I'm going to get this Mew out of here and uh, I'm hoping that we get a timid Mew. That'd be really cool. So go to communicate. Uh, go to mystery gifts. We're going to go over to uh, get with Pokeball Plus. And you guys heard, that was my Mew in here. Would you like to receive it? Yes, we would. Come on, let's go. Come on out. Come on out, my friend. Calling Mew. All right. No DC. Cross my fingers, man. Okay. So we didn't touch trade this Mew. This is legit our Mew here. Add it to the Pokedex. When viewed through a microscope, this Pokemon's short, fine, delicate hair can be seen. Okay, so we got a Mew. Great. Alright, so now let's look. Oh my gosh. I'm kind of nervous, man. So we're going to go over to our bag. We're going to go to our Pokemon box. And then I should have a Mew here. Mew level 1. Uh, check summary. Timid, please. Hardy! Oh, come on, dude. That's it. <laughs> oh, no. So, there we have it. The Madame Celadon does not work with getting your nature off of your Mew. It's really just going to be a, a Hardy Mew. Uh, you know what? Actually, Hardy's good. Hard Hardy's really good. You know what? No, I'm fine with Hardy. Although, I really wanted a Timid for plus speed. So that's unfortunate, but you know what? It is what it is. We got to deal with it. We're going to have to find our best ways about it. So this means the reason why that I wanted a plus speed Mew is because if um, if there's another enemy Mew that's going to be leading off and I start off with my Mew, like I want to be able to outspeed that one or at least go for the speed tie. So now that I know for a fact that I won't outspeed it and get that first hit in, that's unfortunate. So uh, a hardy Mew is going to be neutral stats. That's cool. I mean, um, we've got a couple of stats that we can, uh, a couple of sets that we can run on it. Okay. So, uh, now that we got our Mew over here, I'm going to show you guys a couple different uh, move sets that we're going to teach our Mew right off the gate. So, uh, I'm going to give you guys five of them, and they're going to be five kind of move sets that I feel would be pretty awesome and competitively viable. Keep in mind that everyone plays Pokemon differently, and your sets that you can come up with can possibly be better, or they can come, up, they can be worse. It really doesn't matter. It's all subjective, and the whole thing about Pokemon is. You want to try all sorts of different sets with whatever Pokemon. Whatever works for you, go for it. And it's all about your team composition too. You can't just rely on one Pokemon to do everything. You got to know how to eliminate threats. You have to go from there. Okay, so our first set. This is the set that I wanted for my uh, for my timid Mew. Unfortunately, uh, we're gonna we're gonna show you a couple things right over here. So the first thing for lead set for lead Mew is gonna be Taunt. Now, some of you guys may be thinking, Taunt, a doll, like, what the heck, dude? No one uses that. That doesn't even attack. <laughs> I know some of you guys who don't really know too much about uh, competitive Pokemon. Uh, you may not know too much about Taunt, but Taunt's going to be really good, and I'll explain it why. So, uh, we're going to do U-Turn. Taunt and U-Turn on this Mew, which is going to be really good. Okay, and then this is going to be, I'm going to do, I think I have Psychic somewhere, right? Psychic's going to be one of ours? Yeah, yeah. So Psychic's going to be main for Stab. So we want to give that to our Mew really quick. Okay. I mean, Mew's natural moves that it learns from level up really aren't that great uh, subjectively, but yeah, who knows? So here we go. Uh, and then Stealth Rock, right. Okay. So in this game, there, no one has access to Defog. No one has access to Rapid Spin. Once you get Rocks up, Rocks are up. That's it. So uh, what we're going to do right now is uh, this is my first move set that I want to show you guys for your Mew to be a competitively viable lead set. Now, this works best when you have a plus speed natured Mew, which is great. And uh, that's exactly what I want to show you guys. So let's take a look at our Mew right over here. He's on board. And then we're going to take a look at summary. And then what I didn't do is I can't really judge him. Oh, I can judge him. Okay, that's cool. He's got like a best IV and speed stat. But this really doesn't matter because you can just bottle cap this stuff. It doesn't really matter at all. So that's great. We got a bulky one. But again, bottle caps are a thing. So your individual values do not matter at all. It's all about that nature though. That nature gives you that plus 10% boost in whatever. And then a minus 10% boost in the other one. So, okay. So here we go. Now that we have our Mew, let's, let's, let's talk about this moveset really quick. And then I'll go into the other movesets. 
So our first move set is going to be this. It's going to be a lead mew, so that meaning that you got to know your speed tiers so that you know who you can outspeed and whatnot. And you have to also be familiar with what kind of move sets other Pokemon typically run. If you see an Electrode over here, most likely he's going to probably set up screens or explode. If you see like a Clefairy, it's most likely going to set up screens. Or if you see like a, a Rock type Pokemon as a lead, most likely the person wants to do first turn rocks. So, that's why I love doing Taunt. Taunt is great. If you know that they're going to do a setup move, like uh, Calm Mind or something like that. And that was Rocco, by the way. If they're going to do Calm Mind, or they're going to do a setup non-attacking move, you bust them out with Taunt and force them to attack. So you get that first hit right off the bat. And then, you have free reign to set up your own Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock is the best, one of the best moves in the game. You uh, have levitating stones that just happen, so whenever they switch into a Pokemon, they take damage based off of Rock-type damage, meaning if they're super effective against um, you know, Rock moves, like if you send in a Fire-type Pokemon, you're going to take a lot more damage. If you send in a Pokemon that's Flying and Fire, like Charizard, uh, Moltres, those Pokemon are going to come in with half their health gone, so just for doing nothing. Best move in the game right there, Stealth Rock. First turn, done. Uh, and then, of course, U-Turn is awesome. It allows you to gain that switch momentum. So you can use the U-Turn if you outspeed, and then you can switch into someone that, that is going to potentially resist the hit that's coming at you. And then Psychic is going to be your main attack, just for a uh, same type of attack bonus. It's kind of risky, considering the fact that you're really going to be walled by dark types, but then, of course, you can U-Turn as well. So that's one of my that's one of the leads that I wanted for my, for my Timid Mew. But, of course, you can't always get what you want. Hit me up if you guys have a Timid Mew, by the way. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so there's my hardy one. That's a pretty decent set. Okay, so the next set is going to be a, a different one. This one's going to be a sub-calm mindset. And uh, I really like this one because it's going to be pretty good. So I'm going to give my Mew Ice Beam. And uh, the reason why I choose Ice Beam is because it's ice. Now keep in mind that every single one of these, uh, every single one of these moves that you get in the game, this is like, a weird kind of meta as of right now as far as competitive battling goes simply because you don't have access to every single move in existence which is kind of weird so uh we're gonna do ice beam we're gonna do uh i think roost yeah we're gonna do roost on this one uh so, because mew doesn't have access to recover for some reason uh or soft boil i'm sorry doesn't have access to soft boil in this game so we're gonna do that Okay, so we got uh, a way of recovering half of our health. We got an offensive move in the form of Ice Beam, which is going to do massive damage and have the potential to freeze, which is always good. And then, of course, we need two more moves on our set, which is going to be Substitute, and, of course, it's going to be Calm Mind. So this is a little bit more of a thinking and more strategy-based set, uh, I would definitely say, simply because you have to know... Uh, when your opponent's going to switch out, you have to know when to set up on your opponent, and it's kind of like a late game sweeper kind of a deal. Uh, so what's our other move that we're going to do? We are going to do Calm Mind. I gotta look for Calm Mind. I probably pass it. Now here we go. So Mew can learn every single TM. That's why I'm giving you guys five uh, different move sets for Mew, and we're going to do it. So take a look at this one. Now all of these move sets are totally customizable based off of what you guys want to do. Sub Calm Mind is a really awesome way of just going through and bulking up your Mew. So let's go take a look at our Mew and I'll go over this uh, this different move set so that you guys can be a little bit aware of what I'm trying to do with it. So here we go, this is going to be check summary for Mew. Sub Calm Mind is awesome, right? So if you notice that a Pokemon is going to do a setup move or you know that they got nothing to touch you with, uh, maybe they have a psychic attack and that's their only attack or whatever, you can do substitute. So that means that you're going to sacrifice a little bit of your health and you're going to gain that substitute in front of you. And then they have to break it in order to get through to you, which can potentially mean giving you an extra turn. Now, if you have Calm Mind, you're going to uh, ultimately boost up your defensive stat along with your attack stat by one stage every time you use it, thus making you a little bit more hardy when it comes to breaking that substitute that you have. And of course, as you are calming mind, calm minding, uh, raising your special defense, hopefully you've eliminated all the physical threats out there, you can absolutely use Roost to get half your health back. And so you're going to be so bulky, you can get up to like plus one, plus two, plus three, maybe even plus six, set up all the way on them, keep on roosting off that damage. And then I like Ice Beam because it can hit every single character, every single type, 
Of course, there's going to be some resistances, i.e. water, but you have a chance of freezing. And if you can get that freeze, then you can substitute again, you can calm mind again, you can roost off your damage, and it's going to be really, really good for you. So that's why I like running this set. Uh, Ice Beam can totally be switched out with Mega Drain in case you want to keep on getting your health back even more from all of your missed substitutes that got broken down or just from the damage that you took. So... Of course, this last move can be anything you want it to be. I like Ice Beam because it'll just knock out Dragonite really easily, and uh, I can only imagine everyone's going to be using Dragonite in uh, Generation 1 competitive Pokemon. Anyway, so that one's really good. I like that set. That, that's a really good one. I would say uh, uh, a bulky, like a bold set would be really good for that. So upping the defensive stat, like a, a nature that ups your defensive stat, could be really beneficial for that one. Okay, moving on to our third one right over here. This one's going to be dual screens. Dual screens, kind of like a lead, which is going to be uh, a really good one for you guys, I would say. So let's uh, let's give U-turn for this guy. I think that U-turn is going to be really good for dual screens lead, simply because you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do with it. So we're going to do that. U-turn is going to be really fun. Now, if you're rocking another lead and you want your your entire team to be a little bit more bulky. Uh, to, I'm sorry, bulky to take a lot more damage from any kinds of attacks that are coming, you want to use dual screens at the beginning. And of course, uh, the move attack that we're going to do for this Mew is going to be Brick Break. In case you come across another Pokemon with dual screens on board, you can break them and have them uh, force them to waste their turns. So here we go. Dual screens meaning Reflect and Light Screen, which is exactly what we're doing over here. So we got TM Reflect which is great. So now with this set, it's really all about being a lead and kind of kind of saying, all right, so what, what Pokemon did they bring out? What Pokemon am I going to bring out to deal with them? And will screens be effective on my Mew and my entire team? There's no uh, light clay to extend the length of your screens in this game. So it's just straight up five turns. So you got to keep that in mind. If you're going to do uh, one light screen, then you want to be able to put that up and then you turn the heck out of there. So let's take a look at this Mew and I'm going to show you guys the, uh, the move set now that we have it. Okay, so here we go. Pokemon box all the way up. We're going to talk to you guys about Mew and we're going to check the summary. All right, so here's my hardy Mew. This is my dual screens lead and or it doesn't necessarily have to be a lead, but it, it's more beneficial if you can set up those screens earlier on. So reflector light screen, you're 1v1 against someone right now. They have a whole team of Pokemon and now it's your decision to find out, all right, so if I'm that person, am I going to run a physical move or a special move? And then you have to use light, sc light screen or reflect in order to mitigate some of that damage. So that's going to be really good. You choose, all right, so it's uh, if you're up against them, a champ and you brought Mew, odds are they're really not going to stay in. They're either going to switch out or they're going to try to ch do some chip damage to you. So you can use Reflect because you know that Machamp isn't going to use a special attack. So you use that Reflect, you're going to take the damage, which is fine. And then on your next turn, you're going to U-turn out, thus leaving you with three turns of half damage from physical attacks. So that's pretty much how I do that. And of course, I give Brick Break just in case there's another screen on board and you don't really want to work through the screen you just want to break it so uh, and then of course u-turn is giving you that switch momentum as well so that's my uh, dual screen set from you i really like that one all right so uh one of my other sets that i want to do is more of a physical set because mew can run physical yeah he's psychic and that's great but uh you can totally throw people for a loop if you run a physical set on him Although he doesn't learn any physical stab moves, uh, there's no like psycho cut or anything like this in the game, but you can run some pretty cool stuff. So uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the set over here. This one's going to be a bulk up set. So allow me to find bulk up. Here we go. Here's bulk up. So it's going to be a bulk up set. So very similar to the calm, sub calm mindset. This one's going to be bulk up. So it's going to be the exact same thing, but it's going to be on the physical spectrum. So... Uh, you might want to run a Jolly, an Adamant-natured uh, P uh, uh, Mew for this one, and you can do that. So Bulk Up is going to be good. Waterfall is going to be the crux of this set. I really, really like Waterfall because if you're running a Jolly and you can outspeed someone, if you can get that sweet flinch chance with Waterfall, then you're going to be all set. Waterfall doesn't have the best type coverage, but that flinch chance is the reason why I like it. Okay, so we got Waterfall over here. You can do uh, Ice Punch, which is going to be our next one. It's a little redundant in combination with our, um, with our Waterfall, but it's for Dragonite, pretty much. 
uh, Dragonite, any Mega Venusaur that pretty much come on board, you can easily destroy them with that. All right, so then our last one is going to be Thunder Punch, which is floating around here somewhere. Where is Thunder Punch? Thunderbolt. Okay, here's Thunder Punch. Okay, so this is the, the age-old Bolt Beam combo. Those of you guys who play competitive Pokemon, you know all about this one. There's very good type coverage from Ice Moves and Thunder Moves, as you guys have those typings on your entire um, moveset. So let's take a look over here, and I'll show you guys what I've got going on. All right, so I think I have this Mew all set. And he should be good. Let me check summary. Oh, I put U-turn on there. I'm sorry. I got rid of Waterfall. That's, I should have done that. All right. I mean, U-turn can work, but I mean, that's really not my set that we're doing here. You can throw U-turn on there all you want. So let me just teach him Waterfall really quick, and then I'll show you his, uh, his set. So here's Waterfall. This is good. Now, you can even take this a step further. See, like, Mew is so customizable that you can take the sub Calm Mind set, and you could turn it into a sub Bulk Up set with just two attacking moves, which is also very good. You can absolutely run that. So here we go. So now that we got our Mew, I will show you guys this move set, which is right over here. And this is the set here. All right, so this is my fourth set from you. So we got Bulk Up, great. Bulk Up, what it allows you to do is raise your attack and defensive stats by one stage. And this is great because you can just bulk up when you see that someone's gonna switch out and you're gonna be a lot more uh, of a hardy Pokemon. You're gonna get that awesome defensive boost. And while you're doing that, you can attack with Ice Punch for a chance of freezing, Waterfall for a chance of flinching, or Thunder Punch for a chance of paralysis. Ice Punch and Thunder Punch go hand in hand because of the great type coverage that you can do with it. Flying Pokemon, ground type Pokemon, water Pokemon get rocked. It's really, really awesome. So I would say if you want to take this set and tweak it a little bit more, throw Substitute instead of Waterfall, and then you got Bolt Beam combo behind a sub and bulk up. That can be really, really good. All right, so that's going to be our fifth set, and I guess we'll call it a five and a half set. Uh, last set is going to be pretty easy, and it's, it's more of like a gimmicky set, but I hope you guys like it. And I, you know, I honestly think that this is the set that I'm going to run to my Mew since I'm stuck with a hearty nature. So when life gives you lemons, man, you just got to figure it out. You got to make lemonade. So this one's going to be a really, really fun set. And I can only imagine that it's going to be really annoying to battle against. But since I don't have the top speed possible for my Mew, let's slow everyone else down. Am I right? So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to slow everyone else down with the use of Thunder Wave. Now, Thunder Wave, this is going to be a flinching set, and it's going to be pretty annoying to deal with. Uh, simply because if your Pokemon gets T-Waved, or Thunder Wave Paralysis, there's a chance that your Pokemon might not attack, right? So, uh, allowing, uh, allowing your Pokemon to get paralyzed, and then we're just going to give a lot of flinching moves to this, uh, to this Mew, we're going to be all set, man. So, let's, let's, I'll show you guys the set. Here we go. The set's pretty much done right now. It's gonna be a good one. All right, here we go, boom. Waterfall, get rid of Thunder Punch, we just need Rock Slide. So this is good for my Hardy Pokemon because he's he's neutral, so he's not gonna have, you know, plus or minus of any 10% on, on moves. That means that he can be run mixed. So I can run Dark Pulse without having to worry about losing out on any of the damage, potentially. Uh, and then uh, I can run physical attacks as well. All right, so here's the moveset, the last and final moveset for the video, uh, Thunder Wave. Okay, T-Wave, as I talked to you guys about. All right, so you're going to sacrifice getting hit by something, or maybe someone's gonna outspeed you, hopefully they don't one-hit KO you. You're gonna T-Wave them, right? So now once you're able to uh, paralyze them, they won't. They have a potential of not attacking. But then what you wanna do is take it a step further. You wanna take it a step further and hit them with any kinds of moves that offer for flinching. It's called para-flinch. And it's kind of an annoying strategy, but you know what? In the game of Pokemon, if you're playing competitive, there's nothing that's banning para flinch strats. You just gotta work your way around it. So here's Dark Pulse. It's uh, 80 power. It's not stabbed, so it's just gonna do 80 base power. You got Waterfall, which is physical, so in case you wanted to keep on flinching them there. And of course, Rock Slide, 75, and the accuracy is a little bit shaky with 90. So you can have three moves that potentially flinch your opponents. So you don't have to be the strongest Pokemon to knock them out in one hit. You can just chip away at them, flinch them, keep on going until they're knocked out, which is annoying to battle, but when you're on this side of it, it's actually kind of fun. So anyway, 
Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed these different uh, move sets for Mew. I think that Mew is an amazing Pokemon. He's definitely one of my favorite mythical Pokemon in the game. Uh, so I asked you guys the question: What do you, which Pokemon in the entire realm of all Pokemon in the game is your favorite legendary and or mythical Pokemon? And let me know why. Let me know why. And also, I'm curious as to what kind of movesets you're going to run on your Mew as well. Are you going to run like the Edge Quake combo, which is not really here, but you can run it with Rock Slide and Earthquake, uh, which is very good type coverage as well. I didn't really make a set, but we could be here all day theory mining about all sorts of movesets. So I kind of limited it to five, and uh, we went from there. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about competitive Pokemon. Let me know what you guys thought of the sets. What would you do in order to tweak them? And keep in mind that it is super subjective. There's no set that's going to be the absolute de definitive best set for Mew in the game. It all depends on what you want to do and what you uh, your entire team has along with it, if that makes any sense. So anyway, I look forward to seeing some of you guys on the Pokemon battlefield. Uh, hopefully you guys can uh, see which one of these sets my Mew has, and maybe you can predict around me. But a lot of these sets work out, and of course a lot of them don't necessarily work out on certain Pokemon. They're all situational, and keep that in mind. So thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to continue on with even more Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go EV coverage. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you guys a little bit more insight as to competitive movesets for your Mew when you claim them out of your Pokeball Plus. You'll also find out that Madame Celadon does not work with your Mew, and it's unfortunate, but hey, anyone who has a timid Mew, hook me up, okay? Anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Continue watching our playlist over here. Newest video on the channel there. Recommendations that way, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.